You can see the dense smoke behind me. This thick, acrid, yellowish smog is really enveloping everything here, even houses and cars. And it is why Portland has become one of, if not the city, with the worst air quality on the planet. And there are now real concerns, of course, about the long term implications for people's health, not just here, but up and down the West Coast and also on the East Coast in cities like New York City and Washington, D.C., where the smoke has billowed to overnight. Of course, the immediate pressing issue here is to put out the fires and to try to find the 22 people who have been officially registered as missing. The Oregon State Police have today set up a mobile morgue to sift through the wreckage and attempt to find any signs of life or sadly to find the remains of those who have died in these fires, Krishnan, that have ravaged this state really like never before. And that is the story here that, yes, people can see there are issues with forest management, but it's also undeniable that climate change has played a significant part. Uh, an inconvenient truth, if you like, for the president, Donald Trump, who yesterday simply said, oh, it'll start getting cooler with no evidence, of course. But try telling that to the tens of thousands of families who've been displaced from their homes here. The charred remains of the city of talent in Oregon, where family homes once stood, now scorched earth and burnt out cars. The streets smeared pink with fire retardant in a desperate bid to douse the flames. These neighborhoods usually bypass the worst of the wildfires, not this time. Now it's left to search crews to sift through the rubble, combing for any signs of life. Question, our state has been pushed to its limits. It's really hard for all of us to wrap our heads around the devastation that these fires have caused and the pain and the suffering that so many Oregonians have endured. Along the highway south of the city of Portland, we witnessed mile upon mile of forests ravaged by the wildfires. Inside, entire communities razed to the ground and a thick, acrid smoke that permeates every crevice. The National Guard has sealed off the worst hit areas as firefighters battle to contain the spread. But after a summer of record heat and dry winds, the fires are still burning. <laughs> Nearby, the county fairground has been converted to a makeshift shelter for families, even their animals, forced to flee their homes. <laughs> the neighbor came by and said, you got 20 minutes, get out, the fire's two miles away. We turned out of our street and we looked up and that whole mountainside was just lit up. How frightened are you? I'm really frightened. I don't care about the stuff, but a lot of memories. You know, raised my kids there and I have animals and I don't want them to die. Tammy managed to get her horses to safety, but their home is nestled between two of the biggest wildfires, so she doesn't yet know when or if she and her family of six can return. Blankets, pillows, cots, food, water. For now, it's living off the donations brought here from far and wide. So we've been evacuated since Tuesday. Kim's a volunteer, but she too was forced to evacuate from the nearby city of Malala. That's our house last Wednesday. The sky is red. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so they told you, quick, get out. Yeah, yeah, we did not think we would be going home to something. People didn't know what direction to go. They were panicking, and the fire department and the police department had all been trying to do their, their duties. And it's a very shocking thing for what we've had to see. Down the coast, this is what residents are seeing in the San Gabriel Valley near Los Angeles, where this massive fire has been burning for nine consecutive nights one of nearly 30 major wildfires across the state of California. Millions of acres have been destroyed. The governors say the season's severity is down to climate change. Facts are facts. Science is science. It's about acknowledging the science and acknowledging the facts. Climate change is real. But Donald Trump, who flew into California yesterday, instead blames poor forest management and refused to Together budge as officials science, begged him to be acknowledge key. the science. If we, if we ignore that science and sort of put our head in the sand and think it's all about vegetation management, we're not going to succeed together protecting Californians. Okay, it'll start getting cooler. <laughs> I you, wish, just, you just watch. I wish science agreed <laughs> with you. Hey, well, 
I don't think science knows, actually. Are you worried that you've got a president that doesn't believe in climate change and therefore may not address some of the issues that have brought this area, these devastating fires? I think he cares about the world he lives in. And I think that's a very small little world. Those poor people that have lost their homes, and I don't think he cares about those people. With entire communities wiped out, hundreds of thousands forced to flee, and smoke descending across America, one thing is clear. Climate change has overnight thrust itself center stage into the battle for the White House. Now it's up to the denier in chief to show he cares. Well, as fire scorched one side of the US, over on the other side, here in the southeast state of Louisiana, where I'm standing, Mississippi and Alabama are again being threatened by hurricanes coming in off the Gulf. Even in the last half hour, the wind has really picked up where we are right now. And I apologize if the signal comes and goes, but all the communications towers have been knocked out in the last couple of weeks. A slow moving storm is promising to dump huge amounts of rain and could wreak destruction across several states. This is not the aftermath of bad weather, but just the beginning. This is pre-Hurricane Sally, Mississippi. The tidal surge pushing water onto roadways, lawns and docks across parts of the coast. Those who haven't already evacuated are on their way out now. From, from all the cars are gone, all the boats are gone, so it looks like uh, everybody you know, is taking heat. I think about 95% of the people are going to be out of here. While residents are escaping, they fear what they will come back to. Sandbags and wooden boards will be no match if this hurricane hits with the force that it's threatening to. Now a Category 2 storm, Sally is expected to make landfall early here on Wednesday with several other southern states, including Florida and Alabama, on alert. The authorities are warning that the impact could be severe. This is a very dangerous situation that we are dealing with, and those conditions could worsen as the storm makes its approach to our coast. The storm is slow moving, and so could dump a huge amount of rain on this area, causing floods. President Trump has issued an emergency declaration and approved disaster relief. But for only the second time in recorded history, there are five tropical storms churning in the Atlantic Basin at the same time. And as this storm intensifies, so too will the discussion about the regularity of this extreme weather and its link to the changing climate. This hurricane season is already political and threatens to get worse. Well, Alex Flint is an executive director of the Alliance for Market Solutions. That's an organization of conservative leaders who address both climate change and uh, economic growth. Now, he formerly served as a member of President Trump's transition team and as a staff director of the U.S. Senate Committee on Energy and Natural Resources. And he joins me now from Virginia. Thanks for talking to us. Now, we've seen in the last day... Donald Trump again casting doubt on climate science and saying things are going to get cooler. With fires on the west coast and hurricanes on the east, does he need to change his tune? Oh, I think it was telling that he made those comments in a clearly unscripted moment. You know, I think he has been trying to establish his environmental bona fides. He recognizes that for voters in a few swing states like Florida and Michigan, the environment matters. And so he's been trying to appeal to those voters talking about his environmental bona fides, but he does have these moments and he almost can't help himself where he just talks without script, goes off message and says things like he did yesterday. It's, it's part of his, uh, it's a weakness for him. And so do you think climate change is now actually making a proper entrance into this campaign. Joe Biden now firmly attacking Donald Trump, uh, saying that you can't trust him with, with the climate and with this country and that he's a danger to Americans. Well, climate change is here to stay in American elections, almost uh, if for no other reason than sort of a fact of the calendars. Our general elections are in November. We're just entering fire season out on the West Coast in California. Uh, hurricane season is just picking up in the Gulf. 
those two things as we see, well, the bottom line is the science is correct. We expect more intense hurricanes. We expect more violent fire, fire seasons on the West Coast. These things are here for the time being. This may be the first general election where we have this intense climate pressure going, in this, going into the election, but it's here for the foreseeable future. It's very hard to tell, of course, exactly what Donald Trump thinks about anything, especially after his recent revelations around the science on, on COVID. So do you think when he does basically say the scientists don't know, is that what he really thinks? Oh, I'm not qualified to tell you the answer to that. What I can tell you is that Republicans as a group have been doing some serious introspection about climate in recent years. You know, our party traces its heritage back to presidents who led on climate, the Environmental Protection Agency and Clean Air Act under President Nixon being some of the most recent ones and George W. or H. Bush's lead on Clean Air Act amendments in the early 1990s. And then for about a decade, Republicans in Washington have supported and harbored climate deniers. Uh, that's because addressing climate change takes some really serious changes to the way we live our lives, and those have been difficult to, to set straight with a party that generally believes in a small government and doesn't want to interfere in the marketplace. But as the science has become clear, as we have seen the evidence from fires and rising sea levels and the hurricane intensification, Republicans writ large, A, now believe the climate is changing. They want to see their elected officials do something about it. We've seen leadership, the Republican leadership in the Congress and both the House and the Senate acknowledge climate change in recent years and begin to put forward proposals to deal with it. So there are still a few Republicans who share the views expressed by the, by the president yesterday, but it's no longer reflective of the party as a whole.